I'm Coffee Kevin. Today I'm going to make coffee with two nearly identical automatic drip makers. It's interesting. They're both branded Bonavita. Whenever anyone asks me to name an inexpensive under $100 automatic drip maker that I'd use, I tell them to consider either of these machines. You notice anything different? Let's take a look. The one on the left has a V-shaped filter, while the one on the right has a so-called flat bottom filter. Let's get going with brewing. Oops, <laughs> almost. We get more views every time there's an accident. I'm using a wonderful Costa Rica coffee from Big Shoulders. Great for comparisons because it has everything. It's unusual for a manufacturer to make two machines, each using different filter types. Usually their designers favor one filter type over another. I consider it under the heading Coffee Theology. There's a story behind these two machines with two filters from the same company. The first time I saw this brewer, Nancy Bluestein spotted it at a coffee trade show. Uh, and uh, it had a Melita label on it. Apparently Melita decided to make a mocha master-like brewer in a Henry Ford style attempt to make a solid gold cup quality coffee maker that everyone could afford. In Melita's case, the target price point was $99 and this one was the result. Of course, it used the Melita filter, which has a long history as a manual pour-over filter. From Melita's very beginning in 1908, when Fra Melita Bentz designed the original drip brewer, uh, similar to this one, uh, made, still made today. And the paper filter was a big part of the invention, as Fra Bentz was dissatisfied with the then-current sewn cloth filters and their inability to completely keep the coffee sediment free. Fast forward about a hundred years and apparently Melita decided to bring this machine to market in the US uh, but found it impossible to label it Melita as that name was currently licensed by Hamilton Beach for their designed in US coffee makers. So they introduced the product using the name Bonavita. Uh, this Bonavita brewer was a big hit with consumers. I believe Bonavita currently has different owners. I know it is currently distributed by Espresso Supply in the U.S. Their current designers favor the flat bottom filter. And that brings us to today's comparison. Which filter is better? Well, the flat bottom and conical filters may be compared to sitting in a traffic jam. Are you the kind of driver who pulls over as soon as you realize the merge is coming, like the conical filter? Or are you the kind who waits until the last minute to merge, like the flat bottom filter? The merge of the coffee near the bottom is different. The theory, currently supported by the Specialty Coffee Association's research arm at Stanford University, seems to support the flat bottom filter as providing the most democratic extraction method, one that at least seems to provide less bitter coffee. The conical filter was clearly designed to maximize extraction, thereby also possibly resulting in more actual dissolved solids per weight of ground coffee. I know there are other factors such as the size of the filter holder's exit hole that also play a part, but the differences were enough that Stanford published their impressions in a white paper, which caused quite a stir in the coffee business. It should come as no surprise to you or me that the SCA's uh, research was dismissed by some industry experts, while others, flanked by flat bottom advocates, were saying the equivalent of, well, it's about time. Uh, <laughs> I know I reported my own observations about the difference between flat bottom and conical bottom filters as early as 
1993, in a Bonomatic coffee maker review, Bun usually held up as the inventor of U.S. style drip making, as well as uh, introducing the first flat bottom coffee maker, has always used flat bottom coffee filters. Or have they? Well, on a visit to Bun's Springfield, Illinois headquarters, I spied this, the first ever Bun coffee maker. Notice the filter, which was, in fact, a Chemex paper filter <laughs> and a cone filter. Uh, now, to make this even more complex, there are significant differences between the Chemex and Melita uh, cone filters. Chemex has a thicker, almost cloth-like thickness and texture, and thus a significantly slower drip rate. The conical angle is much wider, a factor I'm not sure the Stanford researchers studied or included. Well, our coffee is just about done, and uh, you can see they're pretty evenly matched. Uh, this one's still making a noise. I don't know what, uh, why that would be, but they're both really designed to meet about the same specs, and I found they're, they're darn close. And uh, what I will do is pull this guy out. Can't help but look. Oh, <laughs> let me put it back. I always get yelled at this you know, on the table. Oh, nice. I'm sorry, I'm having to taste for both of us uh, and to give my observations. Well, let's see. As I said, this is a Costa Rica coffee, and these generally have a, a really nice body and a great bright acidity. It's nice, it's strong. Uh, sometimes Costa Rica coffee is so smooth, it almost disappears, at least to me, if it's not brewed strong enough. And this is. Uh, no real pronounced bitterness. Uh, maybe a tinge. Well, okay. Now let's take a sip from the flat bottom filter coffee. Hmm. The same coffee, uh, same 57 grams to one liter brewing recipe, same water. Wow, nice. Uh, the complexity is, seems a little more. In fact, I'd describe this one as lighter Overall, a uh, slightly more fragrant and, uh, yeah, more, more pronounced acidity. Maybe a little more complex. Oh, yeah. I would predict it will increase, too, as, uh, as it cools. Uh, maybe a little less body depth. Less depth. Yeah, that's what I meant. Well, I'm not quite in step with the Stanford academics, but there's definitely a difference. You know, um, I've been an audiophile for much of my life, and I still can't decide uh, whether tubes or solid-state amplifiers really lift the veil and let you hear all the sound as God and, uh, and Beethoven uh, intended. <laughs> well... The important thing to note is the similarities are greater uh, than the differences. Yet there are differences. Uh, I'd also like to point out that the superiority of one versus the other seems to change with the wind. 
Uh, it was only a few years back uh, that the cone filter was proclaimed the one with the European superiority, a reference to the industry practice of calling the flat bottom filters bun filters and the cones uh, melitas. So they each get a turn being cool in the spotlight. <laughs> I guess if I were to make a conclusive statement about each based upon this single test uh, in comparison, I'd say the cone filter is likely to give you a slightly stronger cup of coffee and uh, perhaps more reminiscent of your manual pour over. Uh, the flat bottom filter is likely to express the complex, clean, bright nuances of your precious and increasingly costly single origin beans. But please don't take these as gospel truth. They're opinions. I know I'm sincere and I have a lot of experience tasting coffee. But suffice it to say, both filters are adept in their role, uh, which is to keep and hold the ground coffee underwater while the precious oils are extracted for your cup. <laughs> Update on CoffeeCon Online. Our January 9 date is solid. We have officially booked Kenneth Davids, author of more books on coffee than all the other coffee authors put together, including me, and uh, founder and taster of the Coffee Review. Professor Davids will be doing an online cupping tasting class just as he has taught at many coffee con events over the years. There is no better person I've met to teach how to taste coffee. You will not want to miss this presentation and we are uh, working out a way for all of us to be able to taste the same coffees together online. I know that sounds impossible, but uh, I think we have a way. Very exciting. I also want to thank Java Master, who sponsor these weekly visits. Java Master is reinventing grocery store freshness in coffee. Visit javamaster.com for more information. I'm Coffee Kevin. <laughs>